Now, our next guest found fame a decade ago, but you never thought you were going to get on, did you? You've been sitting there for <laughs> half an hour. Playing. Exhausted. He's <laughs> on the phone in, he's entered the competition. <laughs> have you got a shed? I have. Have you? Yeah, a friend of mine built it, Gareth. Did a beautiful shed. I should have bought a picture. Is, it, love is it. it a man cave shed? No, no, no. It's lawn mowers and Oh, right. It's muck. a fresh shed shed. Mm. But, but why did Gareth need to, to build it for Because I wanted something nice in the garden. Something special. I didn't special. want to just, you know, one an of those big places. Oh. I wanted something with a bit of character. A man oh, and his shed. Nice. Mm. Well, uh, obviously, we absolutely loved him playing Detective Gene Hunt in Life on Mars. But now Philip Dennister is swapping the police force for the priesthood in American thriller Outcast. Not for the faint-hearted. The show promises to scare, <laughs> shock and surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You're just an idiot. One day I will swear. <laughs> but before we find out more from Philip, let's have a look at some of his career classics. Stop laughing. Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's do the Life on Mars stuff, mm. first of all, and get that out of the way. Because the reason we ask is that Ashley Farrow, who was the creator, yeah. um, has, uh, has said that um, there, there could be a revival. Did he? Yeah. Yes, he did. I think I sort of stirred it a bit as well. Did I, you? I, so I think he was probably asked. Um, the same question. He said he was, so. would not be opposed to it. No, I think I've, I've, I've always said I sort of remain agnostic on the subject. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's sort of that never say never, really. And um, I had lunch a few weeks ago with, with my erstwhile colleague, John Sim. And um, we, we sort of talked about the fact that maybe we should have done a third series, and, you know, which we didn't. Um, and, and possibly, you know, if, if, if a movie version or something like oh, wow. of Life on Mars came up, That'd maybe that would be the route to go down. You know, good. Sounds well, like a very good route. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Possibly. But in the meantime, you're doing mm. something totally and utterly different. I know. Uh, this is Outcast. Bonkers. This is very scary. This follows the life of Carl Barnes, uh, whose entire life has been plagued by my favourite demonic possessions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you play Reverend Anderson, mm. and his speciality is is exercising the yeah. possessed. Well, not not that sort of exercising. No. <laughs> you know, that sort of holy water exercising. And, yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah. So, so where did this come from? How did this? This is very different. Well, it, it is. I, I mean, it just came out of the blue, really. There was an American casting director called um, uh, Lorraine Mayfield, who does all of David Finch's films, and she'd seen some stuff of mine in, in Britain, and um, for some reason thought, Philip Glenister, he'd be perfect as a southern preacher who likes to drink and smokes too much <laughs> and likes a game of cards. <laughs> and she thought of me. I Get cannot him in. think why. Um, so, yeah, so I put myself on tape, which is what you kind of do for the Americas, which my wife filmed in our front room. Oh, right. That was your audition? She, and that was my audition, yeah. Um, uh, with her going faster, faster, better, do it better, <laughs> you know. And um, and then we sent it across to the states, and and um, Robert Kirkman, who created the show, um, and Chris Black, our showrunner, saw it, and you know I managed to blag my way in there. So, yeah. I don't think there's any blagging. No, um, <laughs> absolutely perfect for it because it's not it's not a shock horror. Um, no, it's sort of, it's more sort of unsettling, and you know, and and, and disturbing. I mean. There are some quite gratuitous scenes, but I, th as I've sort of said all along, they're kind of earned. It's not sort of a show that is just exorcism of the week. It's cleverer than that. The yeah. writing's better than that, and, and um, it's very character-driven. And it is a slow burner, um, but it just it just cr creeps into your psyche. Do you know what I mean? Which is mm. what I love about the show because it's unusual for a drama to do. Well, that. do you want to put a cushion over your eyes? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to watch this. Got, uh, I want to hear your accent though, so I'll listen to it. I just okay. can't watch it. Okay, got a clip here. It's quite a mighty fine southern drawl you've got going. You're trying to learn there that Bible language, my friend. <laughs> that was hard. That was, I, I said, I can't do that. I'll do it with a look. <clears throat> <clears throat> because the, if quoting the Bible stuff you said was oh, too hard to remember. It was. I, could, I mean, because it, it's sort of very sort of, you know, flouncy sort of language. And, it, and if, if it doesn't make sense mm, yeah, to me, it, it, I, it's really it hard wrong. to... No, you've got to be out, well, totally exactly. committed you've to get it Exactly, right. otherwise, you know... You, Mm. So the the accent you yeah. when you were there and filming you mm. did a bit of method acting you lived I stayed it. in the accent. you stayed in it absolutely I mean I think you find most British actors do I mean I think Damien Lewis did it when he was doing Homeland and certainly Andy Lincoln does it in The Walking Dead it's just a natural thing to do mm. um, but it's quite weird because we were I was in uh, Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago for the premiere with my wife and I just suddenly just started speaking in an American accent she was going we did <laughs> I'm like. What? She said, why are you speaking American? Are you not filming now? I'm like, what well, just feels right? <laughs> <laughs> you grow up. It must um, be hard, because you've got young daughters, haven't you? So to be away mm. for that amount Yeah, that's the hardest aspect, is, is certainly being away, but... Film um, it's sort of five months chunk at a time, really. Yeah, it's, it's ten episodes, so it's about, yeah, so one hour as well each episode. Did you so, teach mm. the crew and the cast how to make a proper British cup of tea? Yes, of course. 
Did you take your own tea bags? Out? Yes, of course. <laughs> no, in fairness, yes. No, it, it, it was it was great fun. We had um, uh, they taught me how to make a proper cup of coffee because mm. their coffee, some of the coffee there is, is great. And um, yeah, we just said, look, this is you want a proper cup of tea and and some scones. And, oh, yeah, um, all yeah. very British. And so we've I'm... not lost you though. You're not going to no, no, suddenly no, no, no. up sticks and disappear. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, as I've been saying, I mean, so much stuff now isn't is shot out of Los Angeles. So to to move to Los Angeles would would sort of it's not really the point mm. because you'd end up being travelling everywhere anyway. Right. So no, this is my home. I love um, you love the, the seasons. Rain. I love <laughs> I love the rain in June. It washes <laughs> memories of the sidewalks of life. <laughs> It's from Woody Allen film. <laughs> <laughs> um, Outcast, Tuesdays at 10 yeah. on, uh, on Fox. And it's a pleasure to yeah, have you here, as always. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you very much. much. Hello, YouTube. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. So I thought, OK, let's go for it. And I had Ben Wishaw sitting beside me in his underwear. So the two of us are sitting there and I'm all humped over. And Colin Farrell turned round and looked at me and just blatantly burst out <laughs> laughing at me.